Okay, so today we are talking about the INFJ personality type or INFJ sleep talking to be specific. So sleep talking, that's uh, communicating telepathically to another person. That's uh, thinking that you are communicating something but uh, kind of failing to do so uh, in a clear and direct manner. So what I want to help you with in this video is to understand how you can communicate with other people more effectively and if you're a friend or family member of an INFJ, how you can better understand the INFJ's point of view and what the INFJ is really thinking and what an INFJ really wants. So what I found out is uh, a lot of time the INFJ is focused on uh, kind of an intuitive emotional frequency uh, of uh, just what is the other person thinking, what could the other person be thinking, what could the other person want. That means a lot of time the INFJ is busy trying to read minds, which can be sometimes accurate and sometimes inaccurate. We try our best to gog what the other person wants and what the other person needs and we try to consider their thoughts and feelings and our actions. Now, one thing you have to recognize as an INFJ is when am I able to read another person accurately and when am I just guessing? So what if you are sure that another person thinks of you in a certain way, but in reality they are thinking of you in another way? That's something very important to remember. There's a difference between your thoughts about what another person is feeling and what they are really feeling. That means whenever you have a theory about what another person is thinking, you should try to communicate directly with the other person. So what are you thinking? Are you thinking this? Are you feeling this? What are you in this moment going through? Because this can really help the other person ground your thoughts and uh, really help you kind of see the other person and better improve at reading the other person as well. Because over time when you befriend somebody, you get better and better at really understanding their thought process and really understanding it. So not just guessing, but also uh, being able to s recognize certain things they do and certain habits they have and smiles and distinct speech styles and things they do on a daily basis. And you can about after that make connections and say, oh, that's because this person feels this way or that way or because that person is going through this. So. This video is primarily more aimed at not uh, kind of uh, reading another person's mind, but rather an INFJ's inability to communicate in f effectively with other people. Now, the reason for this is INFJs assume that other people have the capacity to understand what they are thinking without needing to speak it out loud. That means INFJs tend to assume that other people know how they are feeling or what they need and that other people are disregarding this actively. So a lot of time it's said that INFJs are a type that is less prone to anger. That means INFJs are overall less angry than the average person. INFJs carry less frustration, less resentment, less... Uh, yeah, they are more at peace and more understanding and more accepting than the average person. But what can make an INFJ really angry is that feeling of being misunderstood. So thinking that other people can read your mind and know what you are feeling and deliberately choose to ignore it. INFJs sleep talk and so what they do is they imagine themselves having a conversation with the other person about their needs and feelings. They imagine themselves discussing with the other person what they are going through and what they want and what is important to them. But in reality, a lot of time, they are only thinking this inside themselves and they are not actively talking with the other person. So as an INFJ, what you might find yourself doing is you think that you've said something to somebody or you think that you made something clear to them or you think that you've explained something to them. But in reality, you actually only did it inside your own mind. And the other person is not a mind reader just as you are not a mind reader. And so they might not even have a clue as to what you want. This is also even made sometimes even more difficult because INFJs tend to dress up their feelings and behavior in a social setting. That means as an INFJ, it's very common to act like you are feeling in a certain way, act positive, act happy, act cheerful because you know there's a difference between the public room and the private room. So 
you know there's a difference between the public room and the private room and that means you decide to be emotionally strong and positive and sanguine for the sake of other people so as an INFJ you know that in the public room I have to carry a certain face I have to be cheerful upbeat optimistic and I have to show less stress and more personal strength so as an INFJ it's easy to kind of toughen out your emotions and to say yeah I might be feeling bad but I will deal with that when I get home and I might have to take some time to myself to deal with this now the problem with this kind of uh, style of behavior is uh, well first other people will go around assuming that you are fine and by because they assume that you are fine they are going to uh, feel that it is okay to challenge or push you or criticize you or do certain things towards you that they wouldn't have done if they saw that you were tired or they saw that you were in distress or they saw that you were struggling so as an INFJ you might find yourself going into a situation or your workplace with a smile on your face and you might find yourself acting like everything is fine and so your team leader your manager your people around you they'll think okay yeah he seems to be happy so he seems to be fine so maybe he can use another task maybe he can handle a bit more and as an INFJ you'll feel like I'm trying my best to put on a strong face and now they're giving me even more to do now they're pushing me even harder or oh, yeah so as an INFJ you will soon have to learn the benefits of uh, communicating also distress to people around you and to being okay with communicating distress to another person one of the hallmark ideas of an introvert is that an introvert is a person that needs more alone time. Uh, for an INFJ, a primary reason uh, for this is uh, if you feel that you have to put on a certain public face, and if you put on a public face that is exhausting to you, if you put on a public face that is happy, cheerful, upbeat, extroverted, outgoing, and all those things at the same time, you'll feel that your energy is quickly fading. and you'll feel that you want to have more alone time. So the feeling, the idea that I have to have a certain public face that is agreeable, that is liked, that is positive, and this is extroverted feeling, this is all extroverted feeling, uh, is slowly draining you of your uh, mental and emotional resources, causing you to feel that I need to pull back, I need to be alone, I need to go away, I need to do this or that. So. As an INFJ, if you can learn to reduce or relax that social face and to assume that it is okay to, in a social situation or in a public room, look a certain way, act a certain way, be a certain way, you'll also feel more relaxed, more carefree, and you will feel that you have more energy and that you can last longer in a social setting. You can stay longer at the party, you can uh, be more involved in meetings and with other people, you can be with a group without feeling taxed of resources. So one thing I'm doing when I come into a group or a social situation is I have my emotional radar on to the max. So. I am constantly vibing off everyone in the room. That means I am trying to study everyone's facial expressions, feelings, issues, struggles. And uh, that can be very quickly draining. So if you're constantly taking in all these different thoughts and impressions from other people, that person is struggling, that person feels this way, this person thinks that way, this person is going through this, you'll also feel that uh, you need more to tune out. So what I find is... Uh, this is often a reason why I prefer one-on-one -on -one settings or focusing on one person or just uh, yeah, not having too many people around me because it's just easier for me to focus my energy on one person and to devote myself to that person. And it's impossible to figure out and understand everyone in the room at the same time. Now, what you want to do is you want to learn to relax those impressions and tune that out a little bit so you'll want to think of the emotional volume of a group so imagine that the group has a volume just like they have chatter and practical things and noises happening around you they also have an emotional volume which is the stress they are feeling the struggles the hardships whatever it is they are going through those are things you want to learn to tune out of or to decrease the volume of you don't need to shut it off completely because it's good to be able to read the group 
but you want to learn to put down the volume a little bit in your head and say those are not my impressions those are not my feelings those are not my needs those are not my struggles because this can really help you survive better in social settings so when it comes to uh, INFJ sleep talking in particular um, INFJs assume that other people can also read their emotional volume so INFJs tend to assume that they are quite transparent I see a lot of INFJs say oh actually everybody can read my face everybody knows me everybody can understand me everybody gets me <laughs> but uh, a lot of time that's not true uh, when you ask other people to actually explain what they're seeing what they think about you and all those things you'll find that other people actually have quite uh, different opinions than what you think so I'll you learn to you should try to write down and first uh, write for yourself okay what do I think of myself what do I think other people think about me and then you should ask people to ask you what they think about you so you should ask other people what they think about you and do you think this about me do you think that about me do you think this about me because that can also help you see the difference between your own mirror and the other person so really knowing to tell the difference between your own thoughts and what you what other people are actually thinking about you so you also want to learn to change uh, the narration in your own head so if you have an inner narrator uh, you'll want to be careful not to put other people's thoughts or opinions into the conversation so you will want to avoid thinking my manager thinks this about me my friends think this about me uh, my family member thinks this about me because this is not objective you cannot objectively use another person's opinions without having asked them about how they are actually feeling you cannot guess or narrate their thoughts about you without uh, actually having a clear grasp of what they really think so instead focus on narrating what you think about yourself this is something you can learn from INFPs Learn from INFPs, study how they think about themselves, and you'll notice that INFPs, they're really good at having an own opinion about their own actions and their own behavior, and knowing what their own opinion is about their own actions and behaviors, knowing, I don't feel good about this and in myself, I know that I, liked, I like this about myself, but I don't like that about myself, I struggle with this and I find this good. So try to change the tone of voice and say, this is not that person's thoughts about me. These are my thoughts about myself. So instead of this person thinks that about me, I think of that about myself. So that way you can have a more clear idea of where things are coming from. You can also avoid carrying resentment because uh, thinking other people dislike you or thinking other people struggle with you or thinking other people are, yeah, different things about you. That can really build resentment of, oh, that why does that person think this this is not fair this is not right why should they think that way about me I don't deserve that be more fair in your judgment by uh, being more fair in knowing where things are coming from sleep talking is also just uh, remembering the difference between fantasy and reality so knowing the difference between uh, you know real introspection and real insight into yourself and real insight into who you are and what you're good at and what you struggle with and all those things uh, compared to fantasy imaginations about yourself or who you are or what you think or what you've said or what you've done as an INFJ you want to try to move towards uh, having some kind of uh, grounding idea of uh, what the reality is compared to what I feel and uh, so you'll want to borrow a tone or a paper from the ESTP handbook and that's just uh, uh, ESTPs they're people that are relatively confident in themselves and their abilities and in everything they do and they really think about you know uh, or doubt themselves or th who they are or their identity they're very confident in themselves so these are things that are quite interesting to think about you know they can really believe in themselves and go through life happy and positive or strong and secure in themselves and what they are doing and they never really worry about doing something wrong or hurting somebody or saying something they shouldn't or uh, obsessing about the future or what's gonna happen next and they don't spend a lot of time with an inner narrator who is constantly criticizing them because yeah they are relatively secure in themselves and they have feel no reason to doubt themselves 
your intuition is a superpower and uh, it is what allows you to be creative and to reinvent yourself and to better yourself and to yeah really work on yourself and who you are and your identity and INFJs there are people that uh, really tend to develop a sense of peace and understanding and acceptance of many things so that's all good and that's all positive uh, the doubt that comes with it is unnecessary and that's not something you will need to have as you get older and the older you get the less you're going to need to have that doubt or confusion about yourself or uh, about other people and the more you're going to have um, respect for reality while at the same time embracing your the ideal so this is INFJ Sleep Talking and if you have any questions about this or if you want to know more do visit patreon.com slash Eric Dorr where you can apply for coaching and where you can talk a bit more about this and where we can really get to the bottom of how this works and yeah how this works for you if you have any thoughts about this also feel free to leave a comment down below in the video I really enjoy hearing your different views about this and thanks for watching